Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some Crusader Kings 2. All right, it's been a while, right? Let's play some CK2, let's have some fun. Now you may notice that the map looks a little bit different and that's because we're playing a mod called After the End, which is a post-apocalyptic whatever something. The year's 2066 and uh, we're playing in America. America, a little bit of North America, a little bit of South America, most, most North America. I don't think Alaska, is Alaska up there? No, we're missing out on most of Alaska. Looks like, but we've got a little bit of the tip of North Amer South America. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool mod. So uh, we're going to play as the... One of the small countries, one of the small people in the Caribbean Empire. The reason for that is I want to try playing out as this uh, Rastafarian... Rastafarian religion. <laughs> it just sounds awesome. Um, so we need to find someone who's fairly weak inside this country. Uh, we're obviously not going to play as the Empress, Empress Portia. Port Portia however you would say her name. Um, but I do want to play as a Rastafarian. So let's see if we can find a count level character inside this region. We've got no Rastafarian counts. What about this? Right there. He's an Earl. West Indian Rastafarian. Sweet. Earl Kirtley. Let's do this. <clears throat> In the Cayman Islands. So I have, you know, I'm diving in mostly blind. I have no idea what's to, what to really expect in this this mod pack, but uh, clearly the year's 2,666, and uh, yeah. So we are West Indian culture. Uh, we are a feudal government, apparently, uh, and the Rastafarian religion is going to allow us to inherit, have priests inherit titles, priests can marry, women may hold temple holdings, our fleets can navigate major rivers, and our rulers are allowed to raid infidels for loot. Yay! Uh, okay, cool. So how weak are we? I mean, it's nice that we're feudal, kind of. I mean, we get slightly better troops than if we were like tribal or something. Um, but the troop type is not that great. So we're basically a feudal raiding dude. We're very weak. Earl Kirtley. Let's get to know our, our friendly neighborhood Earl. Uh, we are a banker. We are in the business of loaning out substantial sums of gold to other rulers. Okay, that's really cool. We're also a bit greedy. <laughs> we're cruel. Envious, proud, diligent, patient. All right, so um, this mod doesn't seem to introduce any kind of new traits, which is fine. Um, it just changes the setting of the game. So, um, what's this then? All right, we have the absolute tiniest little bit of land in the entire planet, I think. Let's take, a, take some time to look around the map a bit. First off, I think that the map looks absolutely gorgeous. They did a great job um, incorporating this map into the game. Um, as far as all the countries, I don't know how they decide like where stuff goes. It's not historical in any way, obviously. It's the year 260, 2666. Um, cultures and religions. We've got uh, <clears throat> Ursuline, Occultist, uh, the Rust Cultist, Re Revelationist, Evangelical, Catholic, Norse, Mormon, Atomicist, Celtic, Gaian, Nisana, or something. Sagrado... Corazon? Is that like Spanish? And it's in Mexico area. Sacred Heart. Hmm. So lots of cool stuff to look at. Uh, we're going to go raiding because <laughs> that's what we do. Uh, we also need to do some of the basics here, get ourselves set up. So choose an ambition first. Groom an heir. We want to have a male child and see him reach adulthood. While this ambition is active, active fertility is increased by 20%. Okay, so we have a daughter, a son, a daughter, and a daughter. So we have a son. Who's nine? I mean, it won't be too long till he comes of age. Become exalted among men seems unlikely. Become the king of Jamaica. Jamaican me crazy. Uh, acquire a title. Uh, I don't know about that. Become a counselor. How are our stats? We're pretty damn good at stewardship. Let's try to go and become an, a become a counselor. Why not? We want some more influence on the council of our liege. Our focus will then be probably military. Almost always want to go military. We just we need more troops. But then again, we're greedy, so maybe we want to do, like, uh, some stewardship. First off, we're... There's new music, by the way. Let's see. Do we have space on our little island? We do... We do have a province holding. Maybe if we take the stewardship focus. Or is it with the business one? I can't remember which one it is. I think it's stewardship. Maybe we can end up getting the free holding. Let's try it. We're gonna be a rich man. Excuse me, I took... I took stewardship. I thought we were already at 17. Apparently the plus three hasn't applied yet. Thank you. Okay, we need that to happen. We have 2,000 gold. Holy crap. Um, that's really surprising, actually. 
We have a foreign minister, a minister of defense, chancellor of the that word, minister of the interior, and a court chaplain. Okay, it automatically appoints the, the best people at first, so... I guess we just research cultural tech for now. <laughs> He's in the water. That's funny, kind of funny. Uh, can we study technology from anyone? First off, does technology get changed? Um, it looks to be about the same as normal. Okay, who has technology? Normally I know exactly where to go for technology, but uh, let's try using one of these map modes here. Okay, so white. These guys have a lot of technology. I'm guessing that they just start with better technology than anyone else. Let's see what these levels look, look like over here. 12, 14, 14. Here we've got 12, 14, 14. Okay, so we're going to go with one of those 12, 14, 14s, it looks like. Let's just go with this guy on the edge here. The Plaque Mines. Plaque Mines. Give me some technology. Well, that guy looks kind of cool. Alright, let's go home. We'll collect taxes. We will definitely train troops. They're all trying to hang out on this little itty-bitty island. There's not enough room for everyone. Let's try to improve diplomatic relations with our leash to hopefully, you know do all right. Let's take a look as well at our duchies and stuff. So we're in the Grand Cayman Duchy. It is uh, just this one thing. Uh, so we could automatically become a duke level right now if we wanted. Gives us some prestige, costs us 200 gold. Yeah, sure, let's elevate ourselves to the level of duke already. We're duke. Congratulations, we're duke. Successor nomination for the Caribbean Empire. Hmm. Uh, we nominate ourselves, I think. If we're allowed to. Yeah, totally, I want to become the emperor. Okay. We can go on a vision quest, we can request a council position. We have a child who lacks a focus. Let's have him focus on... Probably on thrift or something. Okay, what, what kind of traits does he already have? He's already an idolizer and affectionate. Can develop into kind, content, and trusting. And can develop into zealous, erudite, and or frail. <clears throat> okay, we probably want to match the focus that is affectionate and idolizer. There's affectionate... idolizers here. So he's gone for, like, the humility type focus, perhaps? I don't like the idea of him being kind and content. Well, kind's okay. Content, not so much. Let's train him. I, I want to focus on military. I think that that's just the way to go. So focus on that. And you are already curious and an idolizer. Affectionate and curious children would do better with this education. So that would be a good one. Idolizers will be hampered. Affectionate will be hampered. That doesn't matter to us. Timid characters and idolizers will, will do better with this education. Okay. So really, we're kind of locked in on these two. Sure, whatever. Just pick one. I don't. I mean, it's just a, it's just a girl. It's just a daughter, right? We have grand. We have commander slots available because we became a duke. So let's go ahead and just appoint whoever's available. We want to go on a vision quest. We need to be at peace. To be truly considered an adult, you must go on a spiritual journey with the aid of fasting, meditation, and medicinal herbs. Yeah, Jamaica. Let's go on a, on a quest. The Rastafarian vision quest tradition brings begins with a joyous day of music accompanied by singing and dancing. As the celebration winds down, you retreat to the to a secluded location and contemplate Ja with the aid of sacramental herbs. A seeker often sees startling things. Some visions show supernatural or seemingly impossible sights which may be interpreted allegorically. Other visions are more literal. Historical events, happenings to distant lands, or even things that may have... that have not yet come to pass. A successful vision quest will provide you with deep insight about yourself. Alright, let's do it. Sounds good. Okay, I think we're ready to go then. Um, our council's all doing stuff. We could take a look at some of the laws. What kind of laws can we pass? So we have minimum centralization. 
in the Marquisite. It's apparently what they call our duchy. Okay, cool. We have no vassals, we have no... I mean, we're just all on our own, so it doesn't do anything. So we should probably get stuff passed. Before we actually gain vassals. And the obligations do nothing because we have no vassals, so... Council power. There is no council. Okay. We have no council. It's just pure ruler focus. Interesting. Well, that's kind of good. <laughs> Actually, let's allow for revoke titles. Yes, I allow myself to revoke titles. Great. <clears throat> Count Raleigh is seeking a five-year loan at 25% interest. If we pay one-fourth of the principal, other lenders will finance the rest. And we will receive one-fourth of the principal and interest when the loan is repaid. So we lose 25 gold. And uh, changes by plus one. Our opinion of him goes up by one, and that's good. I Sure, I don't know. I've never done this before. Let's try it. A fine investment. Sure, 25% interest over five years sounds great. I'm assuming that's not 25% per year. That'd be too much. That'd be too good. Um, yeah. A great beast watches you with glowing eyes, but you are not afraid. Its tongue lolls from its toothy mouth, and the beast almost seems to be smiling. Seemingly content, the beast departs. Vision of nature. One of the powers of the universe draws close to you within the sacred circle. You are laid bare before its piercing gaze, enveloped by a feeling of strength, compassion, and contentedness with all things. A vision of wonder. A vision of disaster. Horsemen and flaming hooves rend the clouds with a clap of thunder and a burst of blinding light. Sheets of fire issue forth, scouring the land. Hmm. Uh, sure. Once again, I mean, we'll just keep on lending people money. A massive bird takes flight, leaving the clouds with each wing beat. It wheels and turns in the sky, carrying lightning in its talons and producing thunder from the wing wind on its wings. I have no idea what this stuff does. Okay, uh, yeah, we've approved the... Oh, she approved title revocation law. Okay, that's cool. Vision quest ends. Your spiritual journey is nearly at an end. You have experienced many visions, and though a spiritual guide is available to discuss the experience with you, you only you can determine the true meaning of your vision quest. Many seekers take their experience to heart, reshaping themselves in accordance with their visions. Some divide the visions and choose their own fate. Others take a balanced approach, acknowledging the wisdom of their visions without giving themselves over entirely. I communed with Jaw and the universe. I gained perspective on nature. I saw terrible cataclysms. I saw only madness. Uh, yeah, I communed with Jaw. Your visions have shown you deep truths about the nature of Jaw and the universe. These insights will greatly aid you in your theological studies. Some might consider it ironic... That as your knowledge and wisdom increase, your opinion about your significance in the grand scheme of the universe diminishes. diminishes. Those people are ignorant of the truths you have discovered today. Today, uh, My life path has been chosen. I gain the trait zealous and humble. Gain to learning. I will accept some guidance, or my destiny is my own to choose. Sure, let's become zealous and humble. Why not? We believe in jaw. And lending money. I think we're going to get spammed with these pop-ups, my goodness. You're taking all my money, man! And this is one way for us to make profit, I guess. How are, how are these people actually, like, interacting with me? Disable loan request. Ignore new requests for loans. Okay. So there is a button for it. Stop banking. Stop lending money to others. This will not affect any loans we've already made. Okay. Borrow money from bankers. So this is what they're doing. They're clicking this button. Seek a loan from a banker at 25% interest. If we fail to repay the loan within five years, there may be dire consequences. So they're borrowing from four different bankers when they click this button. Interesting. Okay, so... We're gonna get spammed until we run out of money. Can we first off, let's let's see if we can upgrade our castle a little bit. It'd be kind of nice if there was a button to just like automatically accept loan requests. Everyone seems to want money, man. The AI goes nuts with it. And he already paid his debt in full. What was it not even been five years? Oh, well, we made 6.25 gold. Yay. What's the penalty for saying no? Oh, it's just negative one. That's nothing. I 
wondering if maybe this is more of an AI position. Because <laughs> this is a lot of pop-ups. Okay, that's that settle down. We're gonna start building the militia training ground. Interesting, interesting. I like this. Oh. King is now seeking 50 gold. Sure. So why are they borrowing this money and then immediately repaying it? Right? Because that's like, probably what, six, seven people that have paid back already? I mean, it's very nice of them to just give us money. Meanwhile, we're making only 13.5657 ducats per year. But it's barely even been any time at all. And these guys are just taking money and paying us right back. So we're making quite a bit of money. Probably more than we could make if we were raiding or something. I think we still want to do raiding for the prestige. Let's see, who can we raid? We are allowed to raid... Uh... Infidel neighbors. So they can't be Rastafarin. Looking at religion. We can't we can't raid our own queens. Guys here. We can go over to these islands over here. Over, it's not really an island. That's an island. No loot available. Got some loot available from these ones. Yeah, let's see what we can do. So we have 426 troops to our name. We have Nine whole retinue cap usage. Awesome. So we're unlikely to be able to do anything with retinue. We have 18 ships. That's quite a few, in fact. Um, they're going to be pretty expensive. I guess we'll find out. Hoggle looter. Let's go see if we can get some raiding done. While we're clicking these buttons. And then, um, we need to decide, like, how can we attack anyone? First off, we don't actually have CBs on anyone. So I suppose, as soon as we get the ability to, in January, we should start trying to fabricate a claim. <clears throat> I may just have to turn these pop-ups off because it makes the game near unplayable. Rise of the Men in Black. Word is spreading that an Americanist missionary, Hoover, has founded a religion order known as the Men in Black somewhere in Northern Virginia, using trickery and guile this mysterious cult of trained killers has seized control of the fortress of Langley and converted it into their headquarters. There are rumors that President Franklin Ironwit is behind the rise of the order. Just like the Hashashin. Alright, our cost... We're losing 12 ducats a year. Mostly due to, I imagine... Wow, okay, so this one... 100 gold. I'm imagining it's due to the... No, surprisingly the army costs us more than the boats do. We're spending about two ducats a month, 24 ducats a year. Yeah, it's mostly the army. Turns out that, uh, infidels... Or rather, what am I trying to say? Nomads. Not nomads. Tribal country people are better at raiding because they have just infantry. Infantry are cheap. Okay, so we're only getting 1.7 ducats every four days. So the question is, can we, over the course of a year, generate the 24, 25 ducats? And I think the answer is definitely yes, right? I mean, we can go out, we can pick up 160 gold at a time. We're definitely going to make profit from this. I mean, in theory, if we're able to loot 1.7 ducats every four days, then just, I mean, it's not likely that we could raid non-stop, but let's say 50% of the time, maybe? So we'd say uh, 180 days divided by four days times 1.7, roughly? That's 76 ducats a year that we could raid. So we could triple our income if we just make sure that we're raiding about half the time. Of course, that's also based on this thing's speed, and not every province is going to have this speed. I noticed that the, the math doesn't make sense like it used to in the past. It used to just be a straight number. 42.3 num in uh, total county tax meant that you could get 42.3 possible loot. Now it seems to be, in this case, half of it 
Um, but then there's some other provinces that I was looking at, like tribal holdings and stuff up here, where there's just like a flat amount given. So it says max loot 6, even though the total county tax is only 0.7. So I don't really understand how that math is working anymore, but um, it doesn't matter. Rating is still good. Still something you should do. We're not going to want to stick around for too much longer here. There should just be a button to auto accept loan offers. I think we get out of here now. Hey, cool. Technology. Alright, now this guy is independent. There's no possible loot from him. We're already hostile to this guy. Who actually has quite a bit of stuff. Let's go down here, I think. There is a revolt. The Caribbean Revolt against our liege. It's an independence war. Well, leave us alone. Don't come onto our little island. We're going to keep on building up Fort George in the Raiders of Marquis Kirtley to continue their, their task. Okay, so we've got some loot here. What we care about is actually, because because they changed that, like, I used to just be able to look at it and say, okay, that number is bigger than this number and the bar is in a certain spot, but you actually have to hover over this now. Possible loot 21.4, possible loot 12.3. I mean, it's generally speaking going to be this one that makes more sense, but not always. Maybe it is always, I don't know. I think we can afford to kill 80, 85 troops. Wait a second, we're not hostile. We're still flagged as raiders. Oh, you are... Pff, derp. Part of the Caribbean Empire. I knew that. Alright, well let's get our Chancellor fabricating a claim then. Maybe we go for... Who could we actually beat? This guy's got 800 troops. We had enough money, we could hire mercs. What kind of mercs are even available? Oh, there's tons of mercs available. Excellent. Okay, so let's just go for whatever the heck we want. We need a beachhead. How about this guy? You have no liege. You are of the Brethren, a pirate faction, which is clearly a heresy. We should totally fabricate on this island right here. Of course, we should also probably check packs and alliances and stuff, but... Right, well, I'm going to take a break here. Let me know what your thoughts are, if this is the kind of uh, CK2 you're interested in. If you like this mod, if you want to see more of these types of videos, let me know. Um, I'm not going to record too many of these ahead of schedule, because uh, I'm only going to record it as, as long as people are interested. So, uh, do let me know what your feedback is. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.